Marketer of the day, number 442. Masterminds, the secret shortcut to success, focus, clarity, speed, and action with Charlene Burke. Hey everyone, we're so glad that you're listening to us right now. We're talking with Charlene Burke, and Charlene is a mastermind group expert and an information professional with a background in marketing and engineering. And she's a small business owner who loves to learn and share her knowledge. So we're gonna talk about mastermind. So how are things right now, Charlene? Hi there, Robert. Things are going well. Thanks for asking. I'm, I'm glad to hear about that. And uh, so, yeah, so masterminds, I mean, what are we talking mm. about exactly? Are we talking about like a uh, local meetup, uh, Facebook group, uh, free or paid stuff or all of the above? What do you mean by masterminds here? Well, okay then. <laughs> we could go with all the above. In all honesty, the definition of mastermind that I go by is the one that was presented by Napoleon Hill that everybody's familiar with in Think and Grow Rich, and it actually goes back just a little bit further in Law of Success, where he says that a mastermind group is designed to help you navigate through challenges using the collective intelligence of others. So it is a group of people, peer to peer, working together to help each other solve challenges. Now they can be considered problems, they can be considered issues, so is, by using that word challenges, it can be used in business, can be used in personal. But again, it's a, I call it a small group, two or more, anything less than 10 is ideal, where the focus is peer to peer. They're there to help each other brainstorm solutions to the challenges presented. Okay, well, great. And uh, you're making me think back to different forms of those masterminds that I've been in. And I, I can definitely relate to, well, first of all, when you have like a mastermind and different people are presenting, many times I've been in that kind of situation. And sometimes someone will say how things are going with their business or they'll bring up a problem that I'll realize like, oh, I didn't even know I had that problem. Or even <laughs> though that person's problem is completely different, I can kind of see the parallels. And then in the a mastermind's kind of situation, when it became my turn to then speak, there's been times when even just stating the problem that I have, even getting it into words so that other people can hear it, even that gets me halfway there uh, of solving it. And so I've definitely seen some of the, the great things that happen with masterminds. And so, I mean, what kinds of amazing benefits have you seen happen with these masterminds? Oh, geez. I have watched individuals blossom and grow, even though they didn't intend to. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I've watched uh, increased revenue. I've watched uh, looks of amazement that somebody could so somebody could be in a group of people with such disparate backgrounds and get a solid answer to the business that actually worked, that helped them to sleep better at night. I've watched relationships develop, business relationships. I've watched collaborations happen. I've watched actual business partnerships happen. I've watched people start to go in a completely different direction. That goes back to that personal growth and blossoming because as the longer they stayed in the group, the more they realized that they really weren't in the right business. And so having developed the relationship with other group members, they were able to ask better questions about, I'm thinking of going in this direction, help me ask better questions of what I should do now, and start a completely different business. Those are just a handful of what I've had the privilege of watching in mastermind groups. Super great, so lots of situations where if we were trying to figure it all out on our own, we'd be basically doing a shot in the dark if we said, I'm thinking about quitting this business or branching off in this other direction, no idea, but by having that everyone else in the support system, then you can either get the validation or get the course correction to do it properly. Well, you can. So I often refer to a mastermind group as the secret shortcut to success. And, and I say that because if, if you are the one that caused your problem, and you are the one that has decided you will come up with the answer, you are now using the same thoughts and brain that actually caused the problem to try to find the answer. 
that to me is a closed loop system that will burn out. Now, you take you caused a problem or a problem is happening in your business. You're a part of that business. That's why I'm saying you caused it. Whatever processes, systems you have in place, something's broken, right? <clears throat> right. And you come to a group of business owners and present it to them. You now have anywhere from five to nine other brains working on solving that problem. They will be pulling from their own experiences. It could be that they experience the exact same problem you did. I've seen that happen where two or three had the exact same problem, tackled it very similarly, so that the person who had the obstacle problem challenge was able to walk away saying, oh, I never would have thought of that. So yeah, you don't you don't want to be stuck solving the problem that you caused. <laughs> right. I, I mean, it's sort of like if you went to Las Vegas, <clears throat> if you went to Las Vegas and like went to the blackjack tables and lost a million dollars and said, "Oops, I'm down a million dollars." The only way to get out of it is to keep on gambling. That would be ridiculous. And um, and even yeah. like the, the scenario you mentioned there, that's really interesting because what you what you laid out there is a situation where someone says i have a problem and instead of someone in the group saying i have the answer it's a handful of other people say i have the same problem and maybe they have little little bits and pieces that get on the track to a solution and when you combine it all then you get that the solution but it's like no one person was able to just jump to the answer everyone kind of put their heads together. So lots of interesting possibilities. Right. So I'm curious about what kind of masterminds are you in right now? Oh, so uh, I almost hate to admit this. At the moment, I am not in one. And that is only because the women's leadership mastermind group that I was in ended. So I'm taking a break from my own involvement as a member in a mastermind group. Those that I have been involved in have been women leadership, which encompassed all women, not just professionals. I've been in women business owners, and I've been in general, so general business owners. I'm not going to say solo because we had somebody in there that was uh, had multiple partners in the business. So over the years, I've been a member of a variety of masterminds because. I needed to be focused and I needed to hear from other people how to move forward with my own personal development as well as with my business. Okay, and the, all those things sound great. And I can definitely relate to whenever I go to like a local meetup or I find a new mastermind to join, I, I realize, geez, why did I quit this? <laughs> For a bunch of years, I was kind of in a rut for a couple of years, and then just going to to one little meeting like that gets the spark reignited. So I'm curious, with all the different possibilities to choose from, how does a person go about finding the right mastermind for them? I think it's important that the person understand what they're looking for in order before it's like anything else, right? If you don't know what you're looking for, you're not going to know you found it. Right. So if you're a business owner and you're feeling lonesome because it's just you or it's just you and you've got people under you but it's lonely at the top kind of thing and you're just kind of hanging out wondering, goodness, is this all there is? I need to be around a group of people who are excited about their business, who have things happening that maybe can help motivate me. That's a cl that's a classic reason for some people to join a mastermind. It's important that you understand what it is that you are looking for. But the one thing I want to say right now is that it's also important that you understand you who wants to seek a mastermind group that you need to be willing to give as much as you get. One of the best things that I had heard was from a, a fellow who'd been in mastermind groups for well over 50 years, ran his own, was quite active, very, very successful businessman. And he said, Charlene, when I went to my first mastermind group, I went in with my palm up and I quickly learned that I better turn it down. 
because I am there to give as much as I am to receive. And the minute that happened is the minute I started growing leaps and bounds. So I think it's important that people understand that you need to be ready. You're, you want to look for the answers you need, right? But also understand that you need to be an active member of the group and be prepared to be an active member. I hope that answered it for you. Yeah, yeah, it does. So, so it's not just I'm going to show up and have a bunch of questions and have a bunch of people feed me. I have to right. do my part and, and help the other people in the group as well. That's right. And honestly, that's one reason why I often get this question, which is, well, I just want to try before I buy. I just want to sit in on a couple of meetings to see if it's going to work for me. Meaning I just want to listen, not do anything. And I have to say that's not possible. And I'll tell you why, because first off, you're going to want to participate. You will. You will be <laughs> drawn into and want to participate. It's the nature of the mastermind group. But second is, please keep in mind that the people who are members have all signed confidentiality and membership agreements. And they've, they're coming to, the, to each meeting with expectations that everybody else has signed these agreements and understands the rules up front that you're going to give as much as you receive and that you will be a full participant. Now, having said that, I, one bit of clarification is that does not mean that when it's your turn, you have to take up all of your time to talk about something, right? But that you at least acknowledge that at this moment, I really, I really have nothing to offer. I'd like to uh, talk later or something like that. Those are internal workings of a group. But having said all of that, I tell people to understand that you can't just sit in on a group to check it out, but there are refund policies and there are satisfaction policies. If you're not a good fit, you're not a good fit. I take care of that in my groups. It's only happened once. Um, then it's not an issue. Okay. Yeah. And I've, I've been in masterminds for sure. Well, I was in a, a, a mastermind once where someone stole someone else's idea. And oh, yeah. the person got booted out of it. Uh, yep. Because, I mean, huge no-no right there. So so you say that uh, So there's only one kind of uh, problem with masterminds. Do you, do you mind going into maybe not too many details about it, but what happened there? Um, well, there's issues that can happen. So my experience, I've been, I've been hosting masterminds since 2009. And one experience was that everybody knew the rules and had been had been active members for a few months and there was one member in particular that that always had the same problem and the group members always gave the same answers i shouldn't say that they struggled to come up with different answers because over a period of time it comes to a point where the group members were coming to me and saying can we ask her to leave she's not taking any action what was happening was she was an anchor and she was weighing everybody down. So I approached her. We talked, explained the situation. She agreed to change. She understood. She did. Lasted another couple of months. And then finally, mutual agreement between her and the group members is she's going to have to bow out because she's not an active participant. Now, another one more closely related to um, this is annoying. You never should have joined the group. Is, was a taker and what happened there is he I interviewed him and every, I didn't see any red flags he appeared to be that he was going to be a good member of the group with personality background and you know a good fit and he came to the first meeting and immediately had issues that he wanted the group's help with and the group was happy to help it was just kind of refreshing new ideas were being bandied about and what have you then he missed the next two meetings when he came to the fourth meeting and again had questions and um, when it came time for the other group members to put forth issues and obstacles and challenges he wasn't really interested in participating because his mind was full 
right, with all the good stuff he'd gotten. And that didn't last, uh, you know, two meetings was all it took, and he wasn't invited back um, because you can't be a taker. Then there's the one where um, the not so good fit was, wasn't so much that they came running to me saying, this is lousy, it's not going to work, as much as it was the group members asked that I please address and remove them from the group because they they were presenting an issue with their business and wanted to run some ideas past the group on how to deal with it, partly in revenue generation, partly in uh, business management. And it was all it was unethical. He essentially was talking about stealing from his customers line. And it wasn't extreme, but it was enough that he wasn't there. The, the, his integrity was questionable. And immediately I was receiving private messages from group members to um, there is no excuse. Please remove him from the group. So when I did, I refunded his his uh, monies because it, it happened relatively quickly. It was like the second meeting. And it was obvious that this is somebody that's just not going to fit with the group. So ultimately, the goal is to have a group of people that can work well together, right? That you have at least a, an understanding of what it means to run a business, but what it means to be a particular type of person when it comes to basic values of honesty and integrity and trustworthiness and wanting to improve yourself and your business. Did that help? Yeah. So three sort of scary stories, but I mean, those, <laughs> those are good lessons because like when I go to, I mean, any kind of social situation, I'm always worried, like, am I, am I this kind of person or you know am i being a jerk or am i ruining things so that's good just for all of us to keep in mind to not be an anchor not be a taker and not be the person that's that's a wrong fit because uh because yeah like i i don't think i want to be the person that that brings a group down like that but in those kinds of stories it sounds like it sounds like in all three of those stories what what helped was that you as the leader of the group like knew how to handle things and maybe gave the person a couple more chances but let them know that they were on notice or slowly yes. phase them out so do you think that it's important for these masterminds to have a strong leader because like, I've, I've gone to masterminds where people were just kind of sitting around in a coffee shop which was okay and then other masterminds where if i had a problem i'd like present i'd be the one presenting and i'd lay things out and i'd hear a couple of people like give a little bit of advice here or there but then i'd be really waiting for the leader of that mastermind to give me the real good stuff so i mean do you <laughs> think do you think it's good to have a mastermind with a strong leader or does it matter or what are your thoughts well i, I find it interesting that you you phrased it that the leader was the one with the answer so first i think it's important that there be a leader in terms of the person who manages the environment of the group. So my responsibility as the leader, that the person who's hosting it and facilitating discussion, is to ensure that the environment for the group is healthy, that the members are getting what each member needs. I know what they need because we've had discussions ahead of time, right? I'm there to facilitate the discussions, to help them ask better questions, to make sure that the questions that are being asked have been understood that jumping off into what happened at the lake last weekend doesn't happen to ensure that if we're talking about a sales funnel that we stay on the sales funnel and not get into an employee issue um if i have the answer because i have the experience of business ownership i have a vast background in marketing and engineering I will step up and, and offer my own thoughts to the discussion, but it's always peer to peer first. It's always the members first. I think it's important that if it's member led, I know of some groups that have lasted a long time where the leadership changes and it's almost as if 
each member will host the group and it's valuable in terms of each member learning those leadership skills and facilitation skills some do very well some don't right individuals and things still get done but that's a special group of people that got together that's been my experience without a somebody to turn to if this group that I had with the unethical person in it didn't have somebody to turn to, it would have disintegrated as a group. Because now you're asking individual members, somebody to step up out of nowhere, somebody to step up and you confront, you take care of it because nobody likes to confront. Nobody's going to do it in public, right? I mean, if you're, it just, it just doesn't happen, especially in a in a group such as what I was facilitating at the time. They're high level professionals and tend to stay back and and wait. They'll wait they would have waited one to two more meetings or possibly had I not been there, uh, elected somebody to do the confrontation, which would have been the phone call or the somebody who doesn't care how they say it, they're just gonna say you're out. I don't care. Whereas if you have a leader, somebody either that is such as myself or somebody who is a member of the group, but is a leader and willing to take that responsibility, we know how to speak with the individual members and it's off the shoulders of everybody else. They know that's going to be taken care of and can focus on what's most important, which is taking care of business. Awesome. So it, it sounds so it sounds like there are a bunch of just hidden benefits to having a leader. And, and I'm, I'm realizing now that these masterminds I've attended, the people, the person leading it does a lot more work than kind of meets the eye. It sounds like without okay. that leader there with the, you know, if it's basically anarchy, then the group could easily split apart or kind of go in, in the direction you don't want. And that leader puts in some finesse, whereas otherwise things would just be uh, really hectic. And I've noticed that from when I, when I first began attending a mastermind, I was at first like really nervous. I had the butterflies in my stomach, like really bad, worse than ever before. But then when I kept going back to those masterminds and I kept on talking, if it was either like my turn to present or I chime in if I was giving advice to someone else presenting, I noticed that just the action of doing that over and over made the butterflies really go away and made me a better speaker. So have you noticed that in like yourself or other people, just as far as going to these masterminds, it's really calms the speaking nerves? Oh my goodness, does it ever. So I ran a group, industry specific, <laughs> and in the industry, these people are natural introverts. And quite honestly, most of them as solo business owners are natural wallflowers. They're observers, they are researchers, they are behind the scenes, they're not generally speaking, right? Generally speaking, not actively social. So in this group, I had 10 and one was an extreme introvert. And what I mean by that, I used to be one. So I got her pretty quick and I assured her that she would be an ideal candidate and member of the group because I would help her. Extreme being that she didn't want to be seen on camera and she would only speak when spoken to by me and that she she suffered from social anxiety. Now, that's not a problem. I, I get that. I, I relieve that by being the one that sets up the expectation, right? When I call on you, this is what's going to be expected of you. There are no surprises in my groups. I do my darndest to reduce any inclination of a surprise. Well, then I got a surprise. And this is what happened. In the group, there was a fella who was uh, kind of boisterous about and a little exuberant about what was happening in his business. I get a phone call from this gal and she's, she's ready to leave the group because she's feeling like he's attacking her. Now, I can calmly talk to her, feel out what's really going on, do a little bit of coaching, and walk her through that 
her perspective was a little off and why it was a little off. But then I coached her a little bit on you can step up and this is how you can. And so we talked about how you can present your next idea, your next issue, so that you get the best possible answers and how to understand, detach yourself from someone else's way of communicating, right? right. And um, it worked. So what happened was she started opening up a little bit more about her business and she wasn't as, as hesitant after a period of time, and I'm talking a couple months, she wasn't nearly as hesitant. When it came time for her to speak, she trusted me that I called on her because I saw that she was ready to say something. And over time had developed that trust that, yes, I know I'm in a safe place. Charlene will stop things if anything gets out of hand. I've watched um, people come out of come out of their shelves. I've definitely watched or heard, I should say, improved speaking. This is an interesting side effect is when you're in a group of people who speak well and you tend to uh, catch yourself and making up words or not speaking quite as well. And I don't mean using the big words, people. I just simply mean not a lot of us and ahs and hesitancy and stuttering, but instead being able to speak smoothly with clarity and communicate well. I've watched people go from the stuttering oohs and ahs and ums and uh oh, I don't know quite what to, you know, very distracted to becoming quite clear in their communication skills compared to what they started. So all the good stuff, right, of other people in the group definitely will rub off. So yes, yes, you will see an improvement in uh, speaking, presenting, and communicating. So tons of hidden benefits, better speaking, <laughs> better confidence, a safe mm -hmm. place to try things out. And then once you have that down, then try it in the real world, all yep. kinds of fun stuff. So if people are listening today and they say, geez, Charlene knows what she's talking about. She's got this mastermind thing figured out. I'm sold on the mastermind idea. What are some next steps people listening should do to go out there and find their mastermind for them? Well, the first thing I'm going to ask them to do is come on over and say hey to me. And if nothing else, to check out the groups that I've got going on. If they're not a good fit, that's fine, but let's have a conversation. And from there, if I know of some, after hearing what you're looking for, I'll be happy to point you in those directions. Um, the other thing you can do is I always recommend to people that if you've been watching somebody in particular and seeing or hearing them talk about the last meeting they went to or they're excited because they were so inspired by that group of people. You get a hint that they're a part of something bigger. Ask them if they're a member of a mastermind group. Ask them if that group is taking members and if they think it'd be a good fit for you. Another way, of course, is to do an online search. Just look for mastermind group. I always caution people to um, ask questions, right? Ask the leader or the owner of the group questions. You've determined why you want to be a member of a group. Now you determine based on your questions and the answers given to you if that group is going to be a good fit. How is it run? What are the number of members? How much activity am I supposed to put in? Is it like one hot seat per week or am I given an opportunity to speak through the meeting? Are there any off-limit topics? Is everyone expected to to participate in every meeting. What kind of membership requirements or agreements are there? Are there formal agreements and contracts that you sign? How are payments handled? How are complaints handled? What about personality clashes or member conflicts? How are those resolved? And your own questions, of course. I just wanted to give you an idea of, of how to approach somebody when it's time to, hey, I think I want to be a member. That's saying you don't know anybody in there, right? And you haven't heard anything about it. Yeah, those yeah. are good. Those, those seem like good questions to ask. So that way we know more of what we're getting into. Mm -hmm. 
that's all. I tend to be, and I blame this partly on my being an engineer. Uh, I tend to be uh, pretty detailed. <laughs> I want to know as much as possible because I don't like surprises. And I'm a believer that um, you have to know before you can grow. So ask the questions now and not stumble later. Well, super great. And and uh, it, it's, it might seem like kind of a really just really simple uh, thing to say, but what I realized, especially in the last year or two, is how important it is to be around people and people who are also in the same, I guess, space as you, like other entrepreneurs, but not necessarily in the same niche, but other people who are on the ride with you as well, because it's really easy, especially if you are have a team that works remotely or you're just working from home, really easy to let yourself get trapped in your own bubble and realize that you don't really have any new friends or you're not being exposed to any new ideas. So, and that's especially why I do the podcast like this, just to get some fresh, to get some fresh inspiration and some, some new connections and things like that. And it's really easy to backslide into just being hidden behind the computer screen and doing your own thing. And next thing you know, years and years have passed of just the flatness. And who wants that? That sounds like the real boring routine. So it's a, so anyone listening, this is a really important reminder to get out there and be around people. And you know, I don't say this as if I have all this stuff figured out, but I've definitely had some periods of time when it was just me and then periods of time when I hung around the people. And it's a lot more fun, a lot more fulfilling, a lot more encouraging to be around the people that are on a similar path as you, that are that support system, they help you, you help them. So really, really important reminders here of getting out there, being around people and being in that mastermind. And so you said, Charlene, that a great thing for everyone to do is to go and visit your site and check out some of these masterminds that there are. So what is your site and what do you have for us there? I recommend you go to searchbyburke.com. That's where uh, links out to the various groups that are forming are located. Everything's off of searchbyburke.com. All right, great. And so searchbyburke.com. And when they go there, where should they go? Should they go to the program facilitator or the alliance? Or where should they go when they land on this page? So there should be a tab up on top of, um, well, on the home page, there's the business research program facilitator and mastermind groups and that link takes you into the mastermind groups oh there we go. okay mastermind groups right and then up at top the grow alliance um, and should be fixed <laughs> it just dawned on me oh no it might not be fixed best bet go to the middle of the page and you'll see mastermind groups and click on that and that'll take you to a page with a bit of a description of what they are and then take you out to uh, another uh, another site. All right, super great. So everyone go there right now. That's searchbyburke.com, S-E-A-R-C-H-B-Y-B-U-R-K-E.com, searchbyburke.com and click around there, find the mastermind group for you, and you'll be glad you did. You'll open yourself up to new ways of thinking, new opportunities, get all kinds of problems solved uh, in way less time and get way further in your business than you would if it was just you. I mean, just imagine if you tried to build the Brooklyn Bridge by yourself, as opposed to if you had a big team. I mean, did it by yourself, it might take you 20,000 years. Team does it, done in a couple of months. So why make things harder than they have to be why be, live this lonely, isolated existence when you can be out there and be around the people that will help you to get to where you need to go? And I'm sure that you can attest to, Charlene, sometimes you make one of those connections somewhere in a mastermind and it doesn't seem like it really me meant much other than a new connection, but then later on, years later, because you met person A, you met person B, and you met person C, and then oh. person C or D really got you to where you need to go. So you never know what connection you make, where it might lead. So really important that everyone get in the masterminds and be out there and be on the lookout for the masterminds to join. And most importantly, go to searchbyburke.com. So thanks, Charlene, for stopping by and dispensing all kinds of great do's and don'ts, interesting stories about masterminds, and I appreciate you and appreciate the advice you have to share with us today. 
Oh, you're awesome, Robert. I had a great time. Thanks so much for having me. Subscribe to us right now while it's still fresh on your mind at marketeroftheday.com slash iTunes.